Hey guys, what is up? It is the Fast Break Report here bringing you guys another vlog. So uh, just real quick, uh, I'm not going to say a whole lot about this, but um, I was offered a sponsorship opportunity um, about, what, a day or two ago, and uh, I turned it down. If you want an explanation for why I turned it down, check out the community tab. Uh, there's a long post in there explaining why I decided not to do it, but anyway, that's not why we're here. Uh, I want to talk about the Brooklyn Nets, uh, because they're a team that has turned it around, and, you know, I'm from New York, so I've been kind of fucking around watching some Nets games, and, uh, I I'm just gonna call it what it is, man, these guys have turned it around so much, like, they finally look like the team that I made that video on in the beginning of the season, where I was like, you know, the Brooklyn Nets it could be underdogs, and... I remember watching them, they played the Milwaukee Bucks in a preseason game, and I get that it was a preseason game, but, like, the ball movement was great, like, Ben Simmons finally looked like he found a place where he fits in, um, they were shooting threes, like, Kyrie and KD were just getting open three after open three, and it, it just, to me, it was like, it was just magnificent basketball, like, it, it, it was like a work of art the way they were playing the fucking game, it was just, I was like, this is how team basketball should be played. And um, then they started off the season two and five, and I even made a video saying that Steve Nash is on the hot seat, and literally the very next fucking day, Steve Nash was fired. This is a team that has gone from being 20th in the league in offense and 20th in defense, and that was like at the time that Steve Nash was the head coach. So since that firing and them hiring Jock Vaughn, they've went from 20th in offense and 20th def uh, in defense down to 7th in offense and 12th in defense. And I, I, we got to give some credit where credit is due, man. Um, this team finally looks like a competitive team. Um, you know, I there's so much to talk about. And the, the first guy I really want to talk about is just Jock Vaughn. Um, it, it's nice to see him letting these guys like play the way that like the team was built to be played and at the same time like they're they're playing team basketball they're looking for the open guy Ben Simmons went from looking like a guy that's like okay like is this motherfucker even going to be on the team by the end of the season like it, it was that bad like Ben Simmons was that bad to start the season that people were like okay he's going to be moved by the deadline for somebody we don't know who but like it's coming and now Ben Simmons is playing more of a Draymond Green role, and that's that's what I said in the, the initial video. If you go back and watch that video, I was like, if the Nets can utilize Ben Simmons like a Draymond Green type player, they'll be fine. They could be literally like the East Coast Golden State Warriors, and while they have kind of fit that profile in a sense, they're not from a three-point shooting standpoint, and what I mean is like they're 25th in the NBA right now in... Uh, three-pointers attempted per game, but guys like Royce O'Neal, Nick Claxton, and Ben Simmons are locking down the fucking paint for them. I mean, like, it, you can't get buckets in there, boys, and what I mean by that is they are number one in the fucking league in opponents' points per game allowed in the paint. Like, their two-point field goal percentage for opponents is ranked first in the NBA. They do not let motherfuckers score around the basket, and when I watch this team play, man, it's like, you know what? Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving are, like, staying out of the spotlight finally with, you know, uh, Kyrie Irving, you know, putting out that controversial thing, whatever, I don't know, I, it, it's a little, it, it, it still to this day irritates me that they made such a big deal about that, like, with Kyrie Irving sharing something that's supposedly anti-Semitic, but, like, they kind of pushed the Brett Favre thing under the rug, like, there, there's just so many things that it's like, oh, we're gonna make a big deal about this, but, you know, we're, we're not gonna talk about something else that's way worse, it, it's just, the Kyrie Irving thing to me was completely fucked, um, but Kyrie's come back, and he's, yeah, efficiency-wise, he hasn't been great from the three-point line, but it's still serviceable, you know, um, Kevin Durant is shooting, you know, 50% from the field, 36% from three, um, and they've got some guys on their bench that are really stepping up, um, like, um, I think it's Markeith Morris, I get confused between Marcus and Markeith, but I I'm pretty positive it's Markeith Morris, um, He's shooting 44% from the field this year, and he's shooting like 40, I think 48% from three. I kind of want to look that up. Like, I, I could be wrong about that, but they got some guys on their bench that are just flat out fucking balling, and 
when I look at this team, man, like it, we can go down the list. I mean, um, Edmund Sumner is shooting 46% from the field. Granted, he's only shooting 29% from three, but it's nice to see him getting some buckets again as a Pacers fan. TJ Warren is not shooting the three very well. But, you know, like the guy, like everybody is shooting well from the field. You know what I'm saying? Like the only guy not shooting well from the field is Kessler Edwards. He's shooting like shit. But like literally everybody on their team, let's see, one, two, they've only got one, two, three, four guys shooting below 45% from the field on their team. Um, Like everybody else is shooting like 45 or above, which is really good. So not only are they good at like just scoring field goal percentage wise, like they are literally first in the NBA in field goal percentage, which is great. They're third in the league in three point percentage. Um, They're second in the league in two point percentage. Like I'm just going to call it what it is, boys. Like this is one of the best, like they're the most, probably the most efficient scoring offense in basketball. Um, And when it comes to the, uh, the other side of the ball, I mean, right now in, uh, Two pointers attempted their 20 seconds, so teams are attempting a lot of two point uh, shots against them, but they're first in the league in two point percentage. Like, they are preventing teams from scoring in the fucking paint. Um, when it comes to free throw percentage, they're first. Uh, so, like, I don't know why, but against them, like, teams are just not shooting free throws well. Um, they're second, uh, first in the league in blocks and blo- uh, team blocks per game at like 6.9. I mean, they're, they're doing a lot of shit right. And it's nice to see this team playing well because we would, we just got out of an off season where it was like, okay, Kevin Durant's going to play with Ben Simmons as a teammate, which he doesn't seem super thrilled about. Kyrie Irving is like in trade talks and shit. Like this is a team that like Kevin Durant went from saying like, I don't like the head coach. I don't like the GM. Get me the fuck out of here to get in bitch. We're going to the playoffs. Um, and it's nice because Kevin Durant is finally looking like a leader. You know, Kevin Durant's looking like a guy that it's like, yeah, you know what? I can take a team to the fucking playoffs. I can take a team to the fucking finals. And if this team keeps playing this way, like right now their record is 20 and 12. They're they're they've won 11 of their last 12 games. I mean, like they're, they're fucking balling boys. I'm going to call it what it is. They're fucking balling. So, you know, they, they've got some decent depth. Um, Seth Curry's playing well, you know, like they, they, they're just, they're a well-rounded team at this point. And I I just, a lot of people keep talking about Ben Simmons and, um, developing a three-point shot or something like that. I'm just going to call it what it is, okay? Ben Simmons is probably never going to develop a jump shot. Like, he's 26. Like, I I don't know if he'll ever make an all-star game ever again. I don't want to say he won't because he's 26 years old. Um, You know, a couple years ago, he was, like, in the top, uh, like, the runner-up for defensive player of the year. He's still a first-team all-defensive player. But right now, like, I think he's averaging, like, six, uh, I think it's, like, eight, six, and six and a half a game. And the shooting splits don't have to be great. You know, that's that's the thing about Ben Simmons that, like, I think a lot of people don't understand. You know, like, a lot of people saw Ben Simmons get traded to the Nets, and they were like, oh, like, he's going to have to be, like, their third leading scorer. No, he doesn't need to be that. He just needs to be a point forward, and that's what he's doing. He's being a point forward. They're giving him the ball. He's bringing the ball up the floor. There's a lot of handoff actions going on. Kyrie and KD are getting open buckets. I mean, like, that's what you need him to do. Like, you need a Swiss Army knife, and you have, like, arguably the the best or second best Swiss Swiss Army knife in fucking basketball next to uh, Draymond Green. You know what I'm saying? So, I think if Ben Simmons can play that role, and... It, it, it feels weird saying this now, but I always thought it was weird that Philadelphia had Ben Simmons running point guard. I understand they didn't have anybody to fill that role, but it's like, particularly at the, the point guard position, you need shooting. Like, he's the guy that brings the ball up the floor all the time. Like, you need shooting at that position. And now, once you get into the playoffs, late game situations, right, like, you don't have to give the ball to Ben Simmons. You can give the ball to Kyrie, who is a very capable free throw shooter. And I just, I like that that a team is, fu- like, using Ben Simmons in the correct manner. That's what I like about this. Because I'm just going to be honest, like, for years, I was kind of like, and I think many of you guys know this too, 
Watching Ben Simmons play point guard was just fucking painful. Great pick and roll player, great at getting to the basket. He's great at everything but shooting the fucking basketball, and he's not confident in it, man. Like, if, if he's not confident in shooting, he's never going to get good at it. You know what I'm saying? Like, the best shooters in the game, like, even guys like, like J.R. Smith, right? J.R. Smith is probably one of the most confident shooters the game has ever fucking seen. He can come out and shoot 2 of 10 every fucking night. He's going to keep jacking that bitch because he believes he can make it. Ben Simmons is one of those dudes who it's like, I f almost feel like he like shies away from shooting the three because he's like afraid he's going to miss it or air ball it or whatever. And you know what? If that's what he, if he's not comfortable shooting threes, then don't make him shoot fucking threes. There's a lot of teams this year that are showing, showing the league that it's like, you don't have to be, you don't have to jack the most three pointers a game to win games. And I, I feel like people are not realizing that. Like the Nets are a perfect example of that. They're 25th in the fucking league in three pointers attempted a game. They're fourth in the East right now. And they're second in three-point percentage. You know, it, it's not always about how many threes you can take. It's about how many you can fucking make. And that's that's one thing I've been trying to pound through the head of, like, even Pacers fans. Like, Pacers fans, oh, we need a center that can shoot threes. Like, this isn't 2016 anymore, man. Like, I get that Steph Curry was a revolutionary player to the game and made everybody think they need to jack threes, but... You know, the Nets are out here showing teams that, yeah, you don't need to take fucking 53 pointers a game to win a game. And it's just nice. It's nice to see they get handoff actions. And the cool thing about it is like this team seems to do handoff actions until they get a mismatch. And once they get the mismatch, like guys are just fucking attacking it. You know, like Edmund Sumner is a guy that it's like, okay. He's not the greatest player in the world, but Edmund Sumner, you get him on a mismatch on like a power forward or a center, he's got the ability to blow by them and get to the basket. And Nick Claxton has taken such a huge leap this year. Like he's, I think he's averaging like 1.2 blocks per game. Like Nick Claxton, I got to look at. I got to look at his stats because Nick Claxton, I know is having a good year this year. Nick Claxton is currently, he's played 29 games and he started for them. He's shooting 73% from the field. Um, and he's averaging, um, basically 11 and a half points, uh, a game two, basically two and a half blocks a game, 2.3, uh, about one and a half assists, one and a half assists and eight and a half rebounds a game. So Nick Claxton has really stepped up to the plate. I mean, look at Patty Mills out here at 34 years old, shooting 46% from the field and 40% from three and 91% from the free throw line. It's only five points per game or six points per game, but you know what? It's an efficient six points per game. And it sucks to see that Dayron Sharp's not getting a whole lot of minutes, but like their guys are doing it, man. And like Joe Harris is shooting 38% from three. Seth Curry shooting 40% from three. Um, I'm going to fuck this name up. Yota Watanabe, I think I said that correctly, is shooting 56% from the field, 53% from three. Granted, 69% from the free throw line, but he's scoring eight points per game. Like their, their, their bench guys are getting it done efficiency wise. And that's, that's what I think matters. And Royce O'Neal's getting a steal a game, um, you, you know, like, they're, they're just locking shit down, man, like, they don't, they don't, like, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, Ben Simmons is, uh, no, ben, ben Simmons commits a lot of fucking fouls at, like, three and a half a game, but they're, they're not turning the ball over a whole lot either, you know, like, they're, they're playing great basketball, and, um, you know, right now it seems like we're getting peak Brooklyn Nets. So if you get a chance, I highly recommend watching Nets games. I don't tend to watch a lot of them because, uh, I have league pass and I live in New York. So that game is blacked out simply because I live in New York. But, um, they're, they're a team that like, if you get a shot, if you get a chance to watch them, it's entertaining basketball. Like, they, they move the ball like the fucking Warriors. And I'm like, that's what I like to watch. I like to see guys hit the open guy, get an open shot, because that's good, effective play. And they're doing it. They're, they're uh, Honestly, the Nets, I think, have enough to make a playoff run. But there's a lot of guys out there that, that are in trade rumors. Like, you got a Kyle Kuzma, a Cam Johnson... I, I don't know. I, I, this is a team that I think maybe they shouldn't try to fuck with their roster. But, you know, you if you add another decent piece to this team, I think they're already contenders. But if you can maybe add another decent piece to this team, maybe a, 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 a good backup center. I don't know what, what that looks like, but 
if you can find yourself a deal, like I hear Mo Bamba is, uh, you know, uh, being shopped this year around the deadline. Like if they could pull something like that off, you know, we could we could be looking at a very scary team coming out of the East. Um, do I still think they're better than the Bucks? Um, no, I don't think they're better than the Bucks. But could they potentially give the Bucks a run for their money? Seems like it. So. I don't know, guys. We'll have to wait and see, but tell me what you guys think about this down below in the comment section below. Like helps me out. Subscribe if you guys want to see more on the Fast Break Report. And um, out of this motherfucker. Peace, guys.